What's going on with everybody? It's your boy Eric, aka <clears throat> Young God, coming to you live in the Green Dungeon, giving it to you, real raw rugged. And I got somebody on the other line. I'm gonna let him introduce himself, man. Who we got? Yo, what up, man? It's the boy Banco, Sir Michael Rocks in here, man. Uh, six cell phones, baby. We rapping. Hey, man. How you doing today? I'm cool, cool, man. Uh, shit, just ate some uh yogurt, some yogurt shit, okay. <laughs> granola. I don't fucking know. Okay. Uh, you, you on your white people time right now? You fucking with yogurt, man? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Big white people time over this way, man. Um, I'm, um, you know, trying to, trying to start out without eating meat in the daytime and shit. Maybe I eat for dinner, but other than that, I'm trying to be cool with it and, uh, you know, stay stay healthy, get on my whole foods, white people shit. Okay, I, I might need to start messing with some white hoes, man, because all the hoes I know eat crab legs and, uh, and seafood, so, uh, yeah, I man. I that, too. I eat that, too. I can't, I can't fuck with seafood like that. I, I don't know. It's something about it. It's, I don't know. Like, I like boiled shrimp, but I can't mess with, like, crabs and stuff like that. It's not that good to me. Uh, see, the crab legs, the best one. The crab legs and that lobster tail. That's the best shit, really, man. You got you to gotta try to expand your horizons, man. Try to get into it. I'm, shit. I'm trying, it's man. I'm, I'm not fucking with the SpongeBob food, man. I'm, I'm not really into it, man. I, I don't know. Maybe maybe one day, man. Maybe Crabby one day. Patty. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Krabby Patty, I don't know, man, but, um, nah, uh, that's crazy you start talking about food, because I was going to ask you, before we even start talking about your music and who you are or whatnot, because I'm pretty sure people know who you are is watching this, uh, what are things you into outside of music? Man, I really, um, I really started recently, um, doing a lot of reading on, um, carpentry and, like, furniture building and shit, man, I really want to start being able to build shit feel me like fire interior decorating shit lamps uh i want to do a line of like uh studio studio desk you know desk the niggas had all their studio shit on like speakers yeah. all the computers and all that i want to do like custom studio desks and shit and some in a real cool like design format um uh, beds and dressers i want to do like um animal animal cages and aquariums and type of shit like that you know what i'm saying like just building on things, man, because I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of interior design and shit in houses that just saying, it ain't fire, man, and people be having money, but they shit just don't be fire because it's not a lot of fire shit that really is out here right now, or it's hard to find, so, you know, I'm trying to get on my Ikea shit and uh, start building up some, some fire furniture and, you know, animal cages, aquariums, all that type of shit, man, so, been just reading up on that a lot, and, um, about to start figuring out how I can start taking like some courses and classes and shit for it. As soon as I get done with the uh, these next few projects, I'm gonna really hop down on it. What made you, I guess, like what sparked your interest into getting into that? Uh, I would say I always like I always like homes and, and, and cribs and interior design and shit like that. I've always been into that. I like nice houses, hotels stores, restaurants. I like, I like, you know, the design of things and buildings, uh, for the most part. And that really like kind of put the spark in my back for it, man. And, um, as a kid too, I would always like catch a lot of little animals and turtles, frogs, snakes and all that little shit. And, you know, I would have a little aquarium or tank in it. I would design it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I really just like doing that shit and like decorating the design and making it look natural and making it look you know cool basically man so i always just been into you know design shit really um i think it's just a, a another another part of that style you know it's another part of style to me it's like clothes you know I mean? man i wish i was an arts and craft ass nigga because i don't know it just seems so like it seemed cool like Definitely getting females. Like, if you pull up on a female, like, hey, you want me to draw a picture of you, baby? Like, yeah, let me draw a picture. Let me draw a picture of you real quick. Nigga, I'll fuck around and draw a stick figure, man. So, I'm not I'm not a good arts and craft ass nigga. So, like, when you was growing up, would you, like, drawing and, like, painting and stuff like that as well? Yeah, I was I was tight with the drawing, man. I wish I wouldn't have stopped because I, I used to be really good as a kid. Um, me and my cousin and a couple of our friends, we used to have this little, this little group uh, where we used to just draw like I uh, guess fucking robots or something we used to draw these kind of robots and shit at the store the, uh, it looked like I guess you compare it to like uh, what the fuck is that like transformer kind of transformers looking shit you know yeah. 
draw all that shit, and I was I was pretty nice with it uh, with the drawing. But then, you know, we got a little older, and then you know, hoes started being more important and like getting fly and like going to the parties and shit. So I wasn't really trying to draw no more. I was like, yeah, fuck that. I'm trying to I'm suck up titties or something. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, but that's what I'm saying. Hoes love arts, bro. That's like a thing. Like, like if you pull up on a girl, be like, "Yeah, baby, want to see my drawings?" Like, oh, that nigga draw, girl. Hoes like that type of stuff, man. So, you sleep. That's when I started rapping more, though. Ah, okay, yeah. Hoes definitely love out. rapping more. Yeah. I switched it out. You know what I'm saying? I was like, okay, I ain't gonna draw no more. I'm about to make some beats and rap and like, you know, be that guy. So I started kind of getting into the rapping. By the time I was like 10, 11, you know, uh, we started just swapping out all the drawing shit for the rapping shit got heavy on that so and i just became you know the rapper after that well i mean stand on the lane of you like liking creative things and the way things look um i, I was just on your like instagram looking at pictures or whatnot you want clean ass nigga bro like, like you definitely know how to dress you, you of course you, you're a clean ass nigga man so that that led me to ask this question as well because something recently just happened to me um i'll tell my story after you answer this question so have you ever wore anything that you thought was real but it ended up being fake while ago too um, when I first kind of started coming out with like the cool kids and shit yeah. um, I had I had a pair of uh, I had a pair of what them shit was uh, the De La Soul SB Dunks mm. I don't know if you remember those but it was like high tops and it was green it had a bunch of little colors on them and shit and um, I thought they was real I bought them off eBay and shit and then I'm wearing them and this is when like uh, Nike Nike talk was popping a yeah. lot you know what I'm saying? So I'm wearing them, and then uh, they had a picture of me from like uh, South by Southwest or some some festival or some shit. And then niggas was like, "Oh, them fake, them fake, those fake, they lost souls, them fake, they lost souls." I was looking up, I'm like, "I'm like, damn, I thought them was real." <laughs> I paid a lot of money for them too, so it's like, damn, somebody really got my. But that's that's really the only time. Other than that, I wear fake shit if I want to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if, I, if, I, if it's for the fit, and I wanted to be a part of the fit like i don't care about all that like 100 uh, percent is this real goofy shit like i'm not that type of dude i want to i know what's real and what's fake and if i know if it's fake i know it's fake and i'm wearing it for that reason you know what i'm saying yeah. like so i don't really get too caught up in all the real real or fake type of shit no i, I asked that because uh, um you know chief keeps just bought an album and on this on one of his songs he says uh i spy a fake ass bubble my clear and I got this big bubble Montclair jacket, and I, I review albums, so I reviewed that album, and I had to re- I had the Montclair jacket on, and I jokingly was like, uh, somebody in the comments told me this fake, and everybody in the comments was like, hey, that shit fake. <laughs> and I was like, hold on, what? And I was just looking at the jacket like, damn, this shit fake. So, yeah, it's, I was, that, that shit sucks. It'd be a lot of those fake Montclairs, too. I remember that hustle. Uh, I, was, I was buying hella Montclairs in, like, 2011, 12 and shit, and you always had to watch out for them fake ones, man, because... They look real too. They look like the real shit. Yeah. You know? Only way you can tell is like there's like a little cartoon on the inside of the jacket, right? It's like them little ducks and shit on the inside of the Montclairs. And the way you can tell is like the color is off. The original color is like a little bit darker or something. Mm. The fake ones usually got like a lighter color for the little comic book cartoon that's on the inside of the jackets and shit. So that's how I used to find out if it was real or fake and all that. But, uh, Yes, yeah, a lot of fake Montclairs though, so that's 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 pretty normal. Damn, I, I did not know that. And the crazy thing about it, um, my Montclair jacket does not have any ducks. I still don't got anything in it, so. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, there you go. Right there. <laughs> hey, nigga, ain't putting no effort to my fake niggas. Hey, this shit, <laughs> that's crazy, man. Yeah, it gotta have that little cartoon in the inside. It's a little comic book strip for some ducks or something. Wow. Uh, but yeah, if it ain't got that, it's probably probably not real. I, I, I did not know that. Um, well, I guess to take it back even more, uh, where are you from exactly? I'm from Chicago, um, South Suburbs to be specific. Okay. Uh, a town called Matson. It's like a, a half hour from like uh, downtown Chicago and shit. Well, I ask that because I'm from Florida, and I, I know you cool with a couple of Florida rappers or whatnot. But I, I really I don't know how much associated you are with Florida. And the reason I bring it up is because I've been having this debate with people that Chicago niggas and Florida niggas are almost one in the same. I don't know how many Florida niggas you know to attest to that, but how do you feel about that statement? No, I used to I used to live in Florida. I oh, okay. Live, I used to live in Miami for like uh, almost two years and shit. 
Um, and yeah, I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of homies from from Florida, man. And I could say yes and no. They're similar to us. You know, it's yes and no. They're similar to us, but there's big differences too. Um, that I noticed as well with like Florida niggas and Chicago niggas. Um, the main thing being like Chicago niggas. Especially, uh, especially niggas that's into like rap and into like the culture and all that shit. Chicago niggas are less. Um, let me see. They less less uh, upfront with their shit, or, or how do I say it? Um, they less. Uh, they don't. They don't want to be seen as much. You know what I'm saying? Like mm. Chicago niggas kind of be wanting to be like low key laid back kind of um because like out here everybody that grew up out here kind of knows that when you pop off and you too loud or you too like too much of a target yeah. then niggas don't notice you and you a target you know what i'm saying mm. and that's that'd be the nigga to get shot get robbed get mm. beat up all that shit if you just too out in the front yeah in the forefront of everything um florida niggas don't have that same problem being you know, out in the forefront. That's just kind of more of their culture, you know, because it's more Jamaicans, more Haitians, mm-hmm. more Caribbean people down there. That they like to party and they like to be, you know, live. They like shit live. You know, they like shit hype. They like to, you know, wear wear colors and, and all that type of shit too. Um, but as far as like um, the similarities go, Chicago and Florida niggas definitely similar because uh, I think we definitely we approach girls the same kind of way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like. Niggas thinking that the, the, the girls the same kind of way, and motherfuckers really do. They vibe on the same kind of music too. I would say, like, they vibe on the same kind of shit that we vibe on a lot of the time. Um, but I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of homies down there, man. I'm real cool with Rob. That's like my little brother, man. Rob Banks and uh, shit, Lil Cool and them, uh, Indigo Child, Rick. Uh, man, I got it's it's a ton of niggas, man. Cause uh, when I was living down there, we was just working on a lot of shit, man. And, you know, making a lot of music, a lot of different art, so I became cool with a lot of them down there. When you first started rapping, were you, because you said in Chicago, I guess you guys are more like secret or more like on the low about your music, so when you first started rapping, was you like that or was you out in the open? Uh, I was definitely, I was laid back with it, yeah, I was definitely more, I was more low key with it, um, for one, I wasn't, I wasn't sure that people would like me, because... When I started rapping, um, I came up from like listening to shit my dad and them was listening to, and my older brother and shit. So I grew up with older people. I didn't, I didn't learn from like my friends. Like a lot of people, a lot of people learn from their peers and get get a lot of shit from their peers because maybe, you know, maybe their parents are too old and they can't relate to their parents that much, or maybe they don't have brothers or sisters or something like that. So they they get they you know they get their life lessons and shit from their friends and from their peers and shit. But I grew up you know around older people, so they was putting me on Nas and Wu Tang and like Noriega, all that yeah. New York rap. You know what I'm saying? Like old New York shit. And a lot of like Tupac and I had a pretty deep catalog when it came to like you know rappers like that. So when I started rapping, I was rapping like that and. I didn't think that kids that were the same age as me, they I didn't know if they were like that because they they don't know about that or it's like a little bit above their head, just yeah. a little over their head. So I didn't know if they would like that shit. So I was low key with it until uh, until like niggas got into like battle rapping and shit in probably like sixth sixth grade or something and sixth seventh grade and then we started battling and then you know I kind of stepped out in front with that because I was funny. I knew how to roast niggas. I knew how to rhyme. And, all that shit at the same time so battling was easy and I was just killing everybody at my school basically you know what I'm saying like I was coded in all of them so I became like the best rapper at the school and then I was more on the forefront with it but at first nah I wasn't I was kind of low key I used to like have curse words in my raps and shit and I couldn't let my mom see it and all that type of shit you feel me so I used to have to be like more low key with it it's funny you bring a roaster because you Chicago niggas are some goof ass niggas. Like every time I've interviewed a Chicago nigga, I've gotten to roast. Like niggas I don't know. Like I think I interviewed Thelonious Martin. As soon as he see my bonnet, niggas just start going on my bonnet. I'm like, bro, 
<laughs> we three seconds in, so I gotta roast back. I'm like, I just noticed that too. At first, I'm like, is that a do now? And I said, mine like my sister knew me. But you trying to keep your dreads dry or something? Nah, I just got a fro. I just got a fro. I mean, okay, so if I had a do rat, I got like a fro. It would like flatten my fro or whatnot. You know what I'm saying? So, right, yeah. right. Nah, because I, I just started growing my hair like a year or two ago. You gonna be on the do rag? I mean, you gonna be on the bonnet wave too, nigga? When I, when I be going to sleep, this shit be all like squished in and like crushed over. I be hating that shit. Man. You got it. You got. That's why you got to get the bonnet, bro. Yeah, I gotta try something because this shit be annoying. Every day I gotta like pick it out again and do this shit over again because if I go to sleep, it's gonna get all smushed up and all smashed. That shit ain't cool. Damn, and you already a dressing ass nigga, so you might goddamn get the bonnet that matched the fit, nigga. You might, oh shit, nigga. Hey man, you might, you might, you might pull off some whole new shit. <laughs> you might pull off something, bro. Right? Start some whole new shit on you feel me? That's so, a fact. Yeah, man. I, Chicago niggas definitely goofy. They love the roast niggas. They love just trying to pull your car. So just watch out for Chicago niggas. They, they got jokes. They got a lot of jokes. Y'all niggas is definitely hilarious. Um, but I guess to fast forward to me when I first discovered your music. Now I'm finna compare you to somebody. Who you've probably never been compared to because y'all music don't sound the same at all, but you'll get what I'm saying at the very end. Um, you and MF Doom had the same effect on me. So when I say that, when I first heard MF Doom, I thought MF Doom was the most garbage nigga I have ever heard in my life. Fast forward first time. So first year later, I mean the, uh fast forward next year later, I kept being like, man, MF Doom fire. Alright, let me listen to him again. Hear him hear him again, this nigga's terrible. So it took me at least three years, and when it clicked, it clicked. I'm like, yo, this nigga's amazing. So I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard your music, I did not like it. I was like, bro, I don't get it. Like, like cool, like this, I just, I hated it. I could not understand. Right. Fast forward a couple years later, it clicked. So I don't know what it was, but something was just like, I'm listening to Banco, and I'm like, nigga, this shit is, this shit is amazing. <laughs> like I'm listening to one time, like one time is. A godly song like this shit is amazing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. hold on. Be, be, before I continue on that, one time I feel like that's not one of your more popular songs, but I feel like it's one of my favorite songs by you. I don't know how you feel about that song, but that song is amazing to me. No, I, I fuck with that one. That's 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 a lot of people's favorite. Song. Really? People okay. Really yeah, a lot of people really fuck with that. Especially a lot of a lot of a lot of the hoes fuck with that. Yeah. Song. And so that's one of them joints where. It's not a. I never made a video to it. It ain't like the most popular one, mm -hmm. but it's like one of them underground, you know, cult classics. You know what I'm saying? It's like one of them underground slappers that people really be vibing with. But it ain't never. It ain't blow up to uh, you know, be better than all the other shit. But like, it's one of them joints that people definitely be fucking with on the low. But you gotta just listen to the album to really figure it out. Have you ever? I guess thought about like making more songs of that of that ilk i guess of like singing and like doing like more of like that yeah that's that's kind of what i'm working on now for the most part man um for a while it was just like it was a it was a weird thing because i had started down that path in like 2012 you know 2011 2012 and shit and it just a whole bunch of bullshit was happening mm. through like those years, the twenty twelve to twenty thirteen. It was like great times and terrible times. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like niggas was dying and shit was going on in my family, and uh, you know I was just going through a lot of different things, and it kind of uh, it kind of put me into a different different space, you know, and it made me approach music differently too. It made me approach music differently like i'm a real moody person like whatever mood i'm in that's what i'm gonna give out to the world you know yeah. what i'm saying or, or whatever i'm thinking about whatever i think is cool that's what i'm gonna give out to the world and that music was all from me being like i was in a real happy spot you know shit was cool um fucking with a lot of bitches all the time and um the music the music the music scene was um uh, it was very good for me around that time you know what i'm saying so it came out, that, that kind of music was able to come out really easy because i was just in a, like happy spot and then after a bunch of shit was going on i started getting like more depressed and mad and then like kind of um uh, anti to a lot of shit and then like the scene the music the music scene started switching over to uh pretty much what it is now started kind of turning into it around like 2011 2012 
and um, yeah, I was just kind of like not really, I wasn't really feeling, I wasn't really feeling the shit that I was doing, because I was like, man, I need to do something, like, I got shit that I need to talk about, you know what I'm saying, yeah. I got shit I need to say now, like, I've been through some shit, I need to really put that into the music, because, you know, I was around people that was telling me, like, yo, man, like, you gotta, like, you gotta, like, be real with your shit, you gotta, like, really put in some personal stories, and, like, you gotta really, like, you know, tell who you are, and all these, all these different things, and there's a lot of people in my ear, so that kind of confused me, and then I was just putting out a bunch of other shit, but over the past, like, over the past, like, year, I would say, um, I kind of figured out, like, what the good parts were about that era and about that time period, figured out, like, what, what was good about that, because everybody would always hit me up, like, yo, you gotta do this again, do that, do this type yeah. of thing, and I used to hate that, I used to be like, man, fuck you, I'm doing whatever I want to do, you know what I'm saying, like, grow up, you know, like, yeah. fucking evolve like me, you know, and I'm just trying to figure it out, and after a while, I just stopped getting mad at it, and I was like, you know what, fuck it, let me see what, what was it, what, what, what was it that people was talking about that they want me to do, like, what was that, you know, and I started listening again, and I was like, oh, I get it, I was just happy, you know what I'm saying, like, I was just happier having a good time, I was a little bit more, you know, young and, like, carefree, and, like, I was having a good time, and my life now is like that. Like it's it's more fun now. It's more of a good time now. So I'm able to like create that type of music. You know, I've grown through different things that have led me up to this point now. You know, like I ain't, I ain't really. I'm not depressed. I'm not mad at shit. Like I'm having a good time now. I'm really doing the shit that makes me happy and sounds the best on the on the on the musical side. So I think it was all about just like whatever headspace I was in, that's what people was really, you know, trying to fuck with and I had to just figure that out again. Well during that time when you were you say mad and depressed, is there music that you made that you actually put out that you hate now or you do not like? Uh mm, did I hate nah cause Everything has its purpose, you know what I'm saying? And throughout those times, it was it was easier for me to learn new shit, and I was mm. excited about that. That made me happy, you know? Like, I was trying different things and, like, using different parts of my talent, you know, that I wasn't using before. And now I can take the best parts of that and add that to this, you know? So, ain't nothing I really hate too much. Probably, uh... I feel like, you know, what album was that? Probably the the part two album after Popular, after I made that shit. Uh, I probably could have kept that. I didn't really need to even drop it, really. It was a couple cuts on there that people fuck with, but it was just like, I was trying some other shit that the world didn't, the world wasn't really ready for that type of shit, you yeah. know? So I could have kept that, but um, other than that, no, I don't, I don't really, uh, I don't really regret anything because I learned a lot of shit from those experiments too that I am able to use now. You mm -hmm. know, uh, I switched up like my entire recording process now mm -hmm. you know, because I was learning to do different shit and learning about, you know, different ways to record. Uh, the main thing that I take take away from like those times is I started like I started freestyling. Um, the songs really I started freestyling them without writing them and it gave me just a lot more a lot more flexibility with the with the with the with the ideas and with the flow patterns yeah. and with delivery and, and it made shit come out naturally like it didn't seem like it was too thought out or written down too hard you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like you could tell when a nigga is like just in the moment and flowing and you could tell when a nigga really sitting down thinking and writing it down real hard you know so I like to uh, I like to just build on that more because I was always a dude that would sit down and write hard as hell. You know what I'm saying? It's right, 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 right. But you wouldn't get that natural, carefree flow and delivery from that because it's too it's too much structure to it. You know, so you know the times that I was experimenting, I was just freestyling and I was able to come up with some fire shit off the top, and it would be the delivery would be more of a conversation. It's like talking more. It's natural. It ain't it don't sound like somebody rapping a song at you, you know, so 
that's the main thing that I really took away from, you know, a lot of those times I was experimenting with different sounds and shit. It's like I was able to learn how to just be real and be natural with it and not not have to like forcefully write some shit down. That's interesting you say that because I feel like a lot of people who were heavily brought up in a church have very good deliveries. So I look at battle rap and this is battle rapper named New Jersey Twerk. And he grew up in a church, and he has a really, really good, like, almost pastor delivery. And when you say rapping at you, I feel like a good pastor isn't preaching at you. You feel like he's just, he's talking that talking, he's resonating to you, you know what I'm saying? But if you feel like, you feel like I'm reading off a of paper, like, I went to the girl house, and she gave me some mouth, and it's just like, uh, I'm not really feeling that. So is that something that you, um, cause I, I know you said, like, you, it, it felt forced or whatnot, at the very beginning of the cool kids to now, do you feel like you were always forcing it, or do you feel like you always felt forced, or do you feel like your delivery was natural at certain times? Like, was it on and off? Um, no, it was never. It was always. It wasn't like a forced in the sense of like I had to force it out, or it was like a struggle. Yeah. It was. It'd be easy for me to write a hundred bars in two hours. Like I could do that. Like, yeah. I was, it was coming out, you know, naturally. But the delivery couldn't be natural because I'm reading it off the paper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And before, uh, you know, all the cool kid shit and previous stuff that I've done, I would always just write it. But now, I think my flow is the best it can be now because I'm able to, like, mix it both. You know, I'm able to have natural delivery and flow and, like, conversational tone to it and still come with bars and still come with, like, funny ass lines and cool ass descriptions and painting the picture you know what I'm saying so now it's it's a lot it's a lot more professional to me I feel like right now the flow is is really on a, a, a pro level because I'm able to like make a conversation out of it and still have substance to it you know as yeah. opposed to substance and it's just like a robot with substance you know but yeah. I really like it I like it I like it with a little mixture of both right now at this point man i like to have it where it feels natural feel like a combo feel like i'm not just stuck to one pattern or something mm -hmm. and at the same time it's still substance in there it's still good ass stories or good ass descriptions and stuff whatever it is so it's just like a good mixture now it's crazy i can tell you like you really like you love music like you love rap or whatnot because i feel like there's a lot of people that's coming out that don't really love rap you know what i'm saying like they're doing it just because they happen to go viral and it's like, hey, it's getting me money, so whatever. Um, do you feel like if it ever became that to you, could you still do it? Uh, if you lost love for it, but you was like, it's still giving me money. Oh, yeah, yeah. I would I would, I would, would probably force it, too. <laughs> Just like the mother niggas. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it's weird because, like, everybody got to a point where, you know, it used to be... It used to be cool to be a rapper. Rapping was like, it was like a, a, a I guess a, a personality type. Yeah. Like, um, you got the niggas in school who used to hoop. You got the niggas in school who used to dance. You got the niggas in school who used to fight. Yeah. The niggas in school who used to uh, have all the hoes or something. You got the, those were all like personality types. And the rapper was a personality type too. You know what I'm saying? And I really built myself off of rapping a lot of it. You know, rapping taught me a lot and really put me into my own self. It really gave me a way to grow into my own personality and grow into my own man. You know, that was like my, that was my journey with the rap shit. It was just, it really just helped me to grow into who I am and shit. Um, and now it's more or less like, it's a lot of, you know, Instagram comedians rapping and just strippers and, like, fucking anybody's dad. Anybody's just doing shit. Like, everybody's just doing shit. Rapper is not, like, it's not the, uh, it's not the exalted position that it once was right now. It's like a joke now. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's funny. everybody, everybody, first thing they do, once something happens or they get some kind of viral thing going on they're like oh well, time to start rapping you know what i'm saying like if yep. anything you could go viral for like shitting on yourself or having a wide ass neck you know the wide neck it's like all right my neck big as hell time to start rapping yeah so like, everybody just goes to rapping once something happens i never realized life. that that's that's a fact i never realized that. yeah if anybody go viral if something happened the first thing they're gonna do is like, oh, time to rap but like 
it's 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 just kind of uh it's just crazy to me because it's like rap is like the rap is like the hoe now the mm. hoe of all rap is like the hoe of all music genres like everybody who do anything on the internet you know if you don't know what to do you could always just go rap she fucking like rap is always fucking all the time like rap is like the hoe of the music industry you know everybody just jump in the rap and rap lets everybody in there's no like rules like you can't go be no fucking punk rock and roller if you don't know how to play the instruments or if you don't know how to do the shit like they'll they'll clown your ass you won't get no love it's over you're not gonna have a career yeah. you don't know how to do this shit right you can't go be a goddamn um you know country country singer if you don't know how to do the shit rap nobody gives a fuck about nothing you could suck you can do whatever as long as you make a nigga laugh or do something, then everybody's like, oh, okay, cool. Bro, I've never realized that, right? That's crazy. Yeah, you can't just go into other people's shit like that. Like, country music, they're not letting your ass just come in there and fuck around and, <laughs> you know, just act act a fool and, and a get fact. a check. They're like, nah, you, you, dude, these is our rules. This is how we rock. You might lit your black ass try to fuck around and do some shit like that, man. That's right. Crazy. You can't come, you can't go into rock and roll and do that shit. Like, yeah. But no, it's fun. That, that's a symptom of something I've been talking about. And I've been saying that it's pros and cons of black culture being so accessible. And I feel like the kind is that it's, it's just a lot of people that don't really... It's, it's almost like they do it for the memes. It's like they don't do it because they grew up in a culture or they love the culture. It's just like, ah, it's going to get me some, some viral memes or whatever. I'm going to do it or whatnot. So I feel like viral culture, I mean viral culture, black culture is definitely being pimped out by a lot of people who one were not brought up in it, and two people that just don't care, just exploiting it. So yeah, black culture is definitely just being exploited outside of music, just black culture in general. Yeah, man, that shit is that shit is crazy, bro. And we gonna lose everything in a second if we don't start putting some fucking rules up or putting some kind of some kind of system up to like you gotta have a barrier to entry of something. You can't just everybody ain't welcome. Like you can't just do that type of shit. That's not how things survive. That's not how things grow when everybody is welcome to something everybody just get fuck around and it then it becomes it becomes garbage it becomes something useless you know it's not gonna grow that way like there has to be standards you feel me like niggas ain't got no standards right now that's the crazy part like, we too nice bro like if if, if 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 i was to come into like salsa music uh, but what the fuck is you doing you know what i'm saying like first of all i'm not spanish two i didn't grow up in that culture three i'm probably saying some stuff that don't make no sense they like you obviously just doing this because if salsa music just blew up tomorrow and i just start making salsa songs they'd be like what is you doing that's why i feel like a lot of i remember that, that like that little time period where everybody was making jamaican like reggae music niggas that was like from from iowa i'm like bro what is you doing like you obviously did not grow up listening to that and i don't know how jamaican people felt about that because i don't really know a lot of jamaican people but i'm pretty sure they were just like what the fuck is this no, they don't like that shit. They don't play that shit either. And that's why that shit don't fly as much as everybody coming into rap. Like, yeah. Jamaican people, they ain't supporting that shit. If you fake and you ain't from Jamaica and you don't, you don't really speak Patois and all that shit, yeah. they like, oh, oh, no, we're not listening to that. But our black guys out here, we just take everything. I'm like, yo, we got to start saying no to something. Like, just because something give us a little laugh or something or, you know, somebody is confident or got a lot of ego or something we can't just let everybody come keep fucking all our shit up because we don't have shit to begin with and the little that we do have we're gonna lose all of that shit in a second and we're gonna become uh, uh we're gonna become one of them races because I, I traveled the world bro and, and a lot of different countries it'd be like that one race in that country that don't nobody fuck with they real broken for Everybody arrest them all the time. Everybody be like, get the, get off the, get off my property. Yeah. Get out of the it's like that. Like in Australia, be the Aborigines. It, you know, um, and and, and, and uh, different different countries like Spanish countries and shit, where it's light ones and dark ones. You know what I'm saying? The dark ones. They're like, oh, you know, you gotta go, you gotta go. We don't fuck with the dark ones. Jamaica is like that. You know, that's why niggas be over there bleaching like, stuff. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like. We gonna become one of them type of races if we don't ever get no standards, bro. Like people think that shit can't happen, but how do you think that it happens to all these other races across the world? Like black people, we gonna we gonna get there too. We think because we funny and you know niggas could dance that you know we always gonna be good. But they they slowly learning how to dance and do all that shit. We gonna do <laughs> they learning how to do all that shit. They dancing and cooking and 
doing all type of wild shit. So it's like if we don't, you know, if we don't start protecting our culture, then everybody's gonna run off with the shit. They don't need us anymore because they know how to do it. They, Hold on. They, they really want to only see their people do it anyway. That's they, a fact. They, they, they take it from they take it from us because we the only ones that are really good at it at yeah. the moment. But the more that they learn how to copy us, they're not going to need us, and then they're going to discard us. And then they're gonna be like, well, shit, I'd rather, I'd rather see like it ain't no shade, no shade to like, no shade to like, uh, you know, some of the white rappers in the game and stuff like that. But like, if they wasn't, if some of them wasn't white, it wouldn't be popping. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of that comes from they just want to see a person who looks like them do it. They want to see a person that looks like them rap. Like, I, I mean, I mean, like point in case is the the little girl from um from the Doctor Phil show, the, the Catch Me Outside girl or whatever. So how do black little girls act like that and they get called ghetto and you right. nappy headed negro? But when, when she come out, oh my gosh, she's so fu-, you know what I'm saying. So like they they definitely they, they definitely profit off of us. It's funny, man. So yeah, we don't start protecting our shit and having some standards and like saying no. Sometimes we say yes to everything all the time. We don't start saying no to shit like. Everybody gonna run off with our culture. Like, but you know what it is. Like, we gotta take a step back. You said that we gotta protect it, but I don't think we're in the the stance to protect it because we don't own this. Like, the the big music label executives and stuff, they're they're not black people. So I feel like if they're going to push this music and they're going to push it to the masses, which are white people because they are the majority, then they're still going to eat up even if we do say no. I don't know how culturally effective it's going to be, but if it's getting pushed by these big non-black owners of music and these white people are eating it up, what more can we do? Because we're not in a position to control our music at all. A lot of these people don't even own a master. So how are we in a position to even control and say no, even if we do say no? Yeah, yeah that's a good point. That's a good point, man. I think the only way, the only way or the only benefit that would come from us trying to protect what we do have is there we're not it's not the end yet like they haven't figured it all out yet they're not able to once they figure out how to create it then it's a wrap they yeah. they figured out how to copy and imitate so far but there hasn't been nobody that's come out you know in black in a black cultural uh, uh in a black a black culture creative field there hasn't been anybody who has come out and created better. There's been great copiers and imitators, mm-hmm. but we still are the creators of it. We still set the tone, mm-hmm. you know? But once we lose that, once we don't set the tone no more and we lose that, then we're, it's, it's no reason. That's that's the only thing we can protect is like, y'all don't know how to make up the slang. Y'all don't know how to make up the dances. Like we do it, like y'all gotta, we don't, we the ones that create it. They know how to imitate it and they'll learn the dance. And they'll learn how to dress yeah. like us, they'll learn how to do the shit, but they're not creating it yet. We still are the creators of it. So once once that goes, though, I think then it'll be over with. But you're right, we don't own enough to protect it, but we, we, we still got the creator the creator badge on our back. We still are the ones that kind of start all the shit, and then they run with it, you know, so. Well, I mean, I guess not to get too much into, like, uh, this <laughs> This is deep and depressing stuff. Um, I guess on the brighter side of things, you were in a movie, and um, I, I I think that scene is really funny because I wasn't expecting you to get shot. Like that caught me off guard. Like, like you was rapping, I'm like, okay, nigga, getting into it. That nigga up the Glock on your ass in point five seconds. I was not expecting that shit, man. Um, that, that's one of the, in my opinion, that's one of the coldest scenes in the movie. That was fire. That was fire. That that's was one fire. of the better scenes in the whole movie, man. Even the director told us too. The director was even telling us like, man. This is like one of the best scenes in the in the entire movie. Y'all really fucking set the tone with this, man. And it was just it was just crazy to it's crazy to see how they work. Like I fuck with the movie shit, man. The movie shit way better than me, bro. Like just the way that things operate and the way things run, and you know just the way that um, everybody is kind of in a collective. Uh, collective good spirit to try to make the best of everything yeah. we're doing you know what i'm saying everybody who's on the set everybody nice everybody want the shit to be good everybody positive and is trying their best everybody trying to like if you're acting with somebody else and that's your like uh supporting actor or supporting actress or something they trying their best to get the best from you so you can give them the best and vice versa like everybody is trying to give the best like daniel the dude you know daniel Kalua, yeah. um while we were shooting those scenes and stuff, you know, he would he was just really helpful. You know what I'm saying? Like he was just telling us a lot of cool shit 
really fast that niggas that have to go to acting school for, you know what I'm saying? Niggas that have to be in school for years to learn some of that stuff. So he was just putting it on us right then and there and really like helping us out and shit. Not not hating, not looking crazy or like, man, what the fuck? Who's these guys? Yeah. Doing all that bullshit like how rappers do. Rappers be, oh, well, who's this? I'm not, I'm not supporting that because then that's going to make me look not as cool if I support yeah. else, if I do something. It ain't like that in the acting world, man. And just being on being on those sets was just it was a great experience because it really let me know that like, oh man, this ain't it ain't the whole world that just act a fucking fool. It's just rap music niggas that act a fool. Like it's other people and other other mediums of uh, art that are different. There's a different attitude, a different vibe about it. How did you um, get that uh how'd you get the role? I had the audition. We had the audition for that shit, man. Against a lot of people too. That shit was crazy. I, I never really, I never really, uh, I never really like competing to do shit. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I be hating, I be hating to like compete against a bunch of motherfuckers because I'm a rare type of nigga. Yeah. And like you don't, you're not gonna get all of me from just one audition and yeah. things like that. So I be needing people to like, you got to get to know me to know if I'm dope. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not a nigga that can come and just do one quick thing and then go, oh, okay, we love you. I'm not that guy. You got to kind of get to know me for me to know if I'm dope or not. And I never really liked doing auditions or competitions or, you know, um, different type of little little games and competitions mm-hmm. that they put niggas through. Like, I wouldn't do no American Idol or yeah. whatever. I don't, I don't like that type of shit. So I was kind of anti against doing it, but the, the casting director was just like, yo, you we, I think you'll be dope. You really should just audition for this shit. Just, just try it out. Like, I'm like, all right, fuck it, man. I get the script and start rehearsing, and then, um, you know, we do the audition, and the first one went really well. And then, because okay, we're gonna have y'all come back for another audition with the director, uh, Steve McQueen, and we did the audition again for him too, and he stopped us before we even finished the shit. Was, oh, okay, y'all, yeah, you got it, y'all got it. Yeah, that's it. He's like, I don't even just see no more. Y'all, y'all know what the fuck this is. Like, cool. That's all right. Have a nice day. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and I'm like, right. for real? That's crazy. Cause I never like compete for shit. Like, I always be in my own lane, so I get my shit regardless. Yeah. Cause I perform my own thing, and you know, I'm always the first one in line on my shit. So I always end up winning like that. I don't never usually have to go against other niggas to to win some shit. So. Uh, it was a different experience, but I'm glad I did it because it really changed, really changed a lot about uh, the course of my, you know, course of my career and the course of uh, my next moves and shit. So I'm glad I did do it. So did they write the uh, rap out or did you write the rap out? No, I wrote that. You wrote that? Yeah, that was mine. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, give me something for the, uh, for the audition. I had to write the rap for the audition, basically. So that's the same rap that we used in the movie. That's nice. That's nice. Um, I guess b- before we go ahead and get out of here, uh, I want to do a little bit of fan questions, and uh, we can wrap this thing up. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, so the first question comes from Grime Sees Ghost. He says, "How's the new Cool Kids album coming along?" Oh, new Cool Kids shit coming out good, man. Um, I gotta go back out to LA with Chuck, cause Chuck live in LA, and then um, we're gonna finish some more shit. We got um, we got we're gonna do uh, we're gonna do a, a thing where we'll have the entire album drop but it unlocks in sections on your like Spotify and shit it's not all gonna come out at the same time it's gonna yeah. be like two songs at a time yeah. type of shit. like every every week two songs or something like that it all unlocks and creates the entire album um, the first two we're gonna do is uh, some Kenny we got some Kenny Beats joints that we're doing with Kenny Beats then we got some Alchemist joints that we're doing with Alchemist. And, um, of course, Chuck going gonna, Chuck gonna, to uh, produce some of the joints, too. And then we're going to do some joints with features from niggas. And just, it's kind of going to be a, a, a crazy little, a little mix of uh, different, I guess, different different sounds that's all going to create this one album. But it's coming out good so far, man. We got a, we got a, a, a good number of tracks already done. Uh, the next shit is just getting these Kenny Beach joints done and, uh, getting the alchemist joints done too i quickly want to say i appreciate y'all putting alchemist on there because i feel like alchemist is definitely one of the more underrated producers of all time like he's really great but i don't ever hear him in the the top five discussion or anything like that so right no 
niggas be, yeah. niggas be sleep on Alchemist, man. But Alchemist, his 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 knowledge is just too great, bro. Like nobody is touching that man when it comes to just his knowledge of music, man. Like he's just a fucking he's a great musician, man. And anybody who put all that fire out with Mob Deep, Prodigy, Eminem, all them niggas like that, bro. Uh, Wu Tang shit, bro. Like that's that's crazy. To Bro, like I really got a lot of respect for him, and I think that you know he definitely does deserve more credit. But besides the credit, his talent is there, and that's what I really need. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He got the sound and the beats that he's making for us. They crazy. You feel me? Like I already know. I, if, if, I already if a know. no name, if a no name nigga made it, and people were like, damn, that shit's still hot. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It matter. Like, anybody could make these beats that he's making, and would get. The credit niggas be like, damn, that's fire as fuck, you know, because he just making cold shit right now. So, um, I think that's the most important part, man. Like the name is great. He does have a great name, but even past that, like the actual music is fucking great. Like he making fire right now. So, you know, that's more important. Yeah, Alchemist is definitely crazy. Um, at Ampavelli on Twitter says, uh, did Marioni his clothing line get shut down by the feds? That was a rumor that I heard. Oh, <laughs> I mean, they, uh, not the feds, man. The couple of, uh, those brands that I was using, they definitely came after me and shit. Um, but that's not why I stopped, though. I stopped because everybody just started copying the shit, man. And I just mm. been getting bored with that shit. Everybody just started copying the shit. And it's like, anytime, anytime anything get popular, you gotta just expect that, you know? But I was just not in the mood for it, man. I was like, man, everybody's just copying, biting the shit. And it kind of got a little played out to me. I was like, okay, now everybody's going to print high-end brand names on sweatsuits and all that kind of shit. So kind of just got played, and I wanted to do something else. So I just kind of drifted off into other clothes and making other shit. Okay. Uh, Bayo Coop Bucks, he has no questions, but he said a kilo on Craigslist is still hard as, is hard as fuck. So there's that. Um, Mitch says... uh. Ask him if he thinks the cool kids inspire our future in Brockhampton. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, Tyler, Tyler the Creator, will tell you that itself. Um, yeah, it's, it, we, we was we was the like different black kids. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we came out just being different black kids and kind of opened the door for a lot of them to be who they are yeah. as well. You know what I'm saying? And be who they are and, and be comfortable with it. So yeah, I definitely think we. You know, we inspired our future in Brockhampton too. Um, yeah, even Tyler and Earl, all the niggas will tell you that. Okay. Um, a lot of people ask this, so no specific person, but uh, the two, one, like two of the popular questions are: Do you have any unreleased music with Mac, and do you have any memories that you want to share? Yeah, I guess uh, I'll start with the memories first because we got a, some crazy memories. But I remember uh, it was Max. I think it was his 21st birthday or something and we in vegas and um i'm teaching him how to uh i'm teaching him how to play craps roll dice yeah. dice table and shit so teaching him how to play craps and um you know we rolling and shit and then we start just winning hella bread bro we up like a couple g's and shit and this is mac first time and this nigga he up like 10 bands and all kind of shit going crazy and oh we we own a hella molly too not to mention we just <laughs> We was off all the molly, so we was in there just geeked, geeked up, making all this bread and shit, and like all these old ladies and shit at the table screaming, like, "Oh, they, they, it's fucking crazy!" We, we was on a roll, like we won so much money, that shit was fun. And then uh, he had a, a pool party at the uh, Palms Hotel in that Playboy Mansion suite up there and shit, and we had called all these strippers over, and it was fucking fire, man. And we just kicked it all night. Uh, and just did a lot of Molly. <laughs> it was just fucked up. And, uh, you know, that was just one of those moments where, you know, I just realized, like, damn, man, like, besides just being a musician, like, this nigga is actually, like, a good friend of mine. Like, this yeah. is a real friend to me, man. And I haven't, you know, I haven't really ran into anybody, any other artist, like, that I didn't know already that became a good friend of mine like that. Like, he was just a genuine dude, man, just a fucking... A good friend that didn't, you know, he didn't shortchange his friends. He, he he would give it all for his friends. You know, he would do anything for you know people that he really fuck with. He was a genuine man, so I definitely uh, 
got a lot of a lot of good memories getting back, man. But that's one that I always remember. Um, and I guess they said uh, unreleased music with oh, him. Music, the music shit too. Yeah, there is some shit that we got, but um, it's all got to be clear with you know his uh, management and shit. Yeah. Um, see what they want to do with it, cause it was it's his shit, you know. It wasn't my songs. It was some songs that I'm on with him that we didn't drop. Okay. Uh, but yeah, if they if they whatever they do with it, that's what they do with it. Okay. Um, another very popular question everybody asks was, uh, will your mixtapes ever come to streaming? Yeah, man. I just got to tell my manager to do that shit. I know a lot of people been hitting me up um, about that shit, so I'm gonna get on that for sure. Uh, but yeah, I just gotta tell my man to put that shit up on there because it's it's pretty simple. Um, I don't know why they not though. I'm like, what the fuck? Why wouldn't y'all put that up? Like, what is going on? But yeah, I definitely have heard that same question a lot too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely get on that. Okay. Uh, Thorne said, "What's your favorite anime?" Uh, my favorite anime right now. Uh, I just finished watching Castlevania uh, about Dracula and shit. That shit was actually pretty good. I really, uh, I really fuck with the storyline of that. It was, it's, it's like a funny one because it was like it's super corny, but it's at the same time it's like good. It's weird. Like I haven't really seen a, an anime that made me feel like that in a while. Like it'd be moments where I'm like, oh, that's corny as fuck. And there's <laughs> moments where I'm like, damn, this shit deep. Like this shit crazy. So I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was cool. I watched that shit real quick. I watched it in a few days, honestly. Um, but right now, yeah, I, I fuck with that. I give them a thumbs up on that that castle lane and shit that was cold all right uh last couple ones uh one come from molly gatar he says uh how did how did space ghost reach out to you when you recorded dollar bills and also if sea world ever responded to him <laughs> sea world uh no me and, uh space ghost he's from miami you know so i was living down in miami and um i used to just run into him all the time you know going to different shows and shit with like denzel curry and rob and uh, all those kids. So he was just another one of the, he was just another one of the Florida, you know, Florida niggas that I was yeah. cool with. Um, and then one day he just wanted to get in the lab because I've been asking him like, yo, we gotta get in the stool, like we gotta get some shit cracking. Like yo, beats is too crazy. Like let's let's get some shit popping. And then we ended up uh, hopping in the lab, making some making some crazy shit, man. It's a shame like they do. I know Space Ghost do a lot of wild shit. <laughs> yeah, and he has pretty much blackballed himself, but. It's just a shame because dude is cold as fuck, bro. Like I, I was listening to beats in the studio with him back then. And it's like shit would be crazy now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's like 2013, 2014, shit. And um, you know he just got a lot of he got a lot of talent, man. It's just a shame, you know, things happen like they did. But that dude cold as fuck. Man. That's one of the that's one of the best producers of our generation, really. From, you know, 80s and 90s kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's one of our that's one of our best producers. I think he better than he better than a lot of these niggas to be honest. He better than a lot of our producers that are out now. Like but again he has blackballed himself and you know, he just be wilding now and the niggas ain't fucking with him. Yeah, that, that, that nigga. If he ever got himself straight, maybe he can make a comeback. Like if he ever sat down and went somewhere and got himself straight, maybe he'll make a comeback, maybe one of these days. Um Yeah. Hopefully, man. We'll see. Um, last question comes from KTT's finest. He says, "Ask him whatever happened to him during Jet Life. Are him and Spitter still cool?" Oh, Jet Life shit, man. Um, that came about when Currency he had just like, cause we was always cool, and um, you know he used to come to Chicago and stay at my house and shit, and we used to just be fucking around, and get high, and all that. And um, when I started doing solo music. He had hit me up and said, damn, bro, like, what you doing with all this solo shit? You just putting out mixtapes, like, you got a deal for this or something? Like, because he had just got his Warner Brothers deal. Um, and Warner Brothers was going to be putting up, you know, support behind the Jet Life label and all that shit. So he was looking to, you know, sign niggas and, and really, like, start getting his label popping. So I ended up uh, signing, go like, hell yeah, bro, like, definitely. You, you can't say no to currency, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just one of the niggas that's just like, he always be one of those cool ass dudes. Like, he's yeah. a legend, you know? And he's a good friend of mine, too, so, uh, you can't say no, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, yeah, let's fucking go, let's try it out, let's see what's good. And then, you know, once we was trying to get started, it was just, uh, 
I was looking for I was looking for something different that they wasn't ready to do yet. They couldn't do yet at the yeah. time, especially because like when the major labels involved, things take a lot of more time. Yeah. Like, things take a lot more uh, signatures and all that shit, and I wasn't really. I ain't have time for it. I was like, no, nah, I kind of got to keep pushing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't no bad blood or no hard feelings. No. He's like, oh, yeah, I understand, bro. Shit, fuck it. You know, we'll figure it out. Yeah. And then, you know, we just kind of kind of just went our, our separate ways, man. But it's just one of the things that I wish it would have happened right, you know? Yeah. If it would have happened right, that would have been super dope. But, you know, everything happens for a reason, man. And I still needed to, you know, I still needed to see what was up with myself. You know, yeah. I still had a lot more self self growth to do. I had a lot more evolving to do myself before, you know, I could settle into something like that anyway. So it all happened for a reason, but I, I wish we could have uh, wish we could have did it the right way. Also, a question that I actually skipped over to a lot of people asking: Is there any more music with Rob coming in the future? Yeah, actually, Rob uh, Rob is on the new Cool Kids okay. album, so he got something on this new Cool Kids shit that's about to come out. So yeah, real soon. All right, well, anything else you got to say before we get out of here, man? Shit, yeah, man. Uh, we just working, man. I'm, I'm in the lab. Um, just working on the new Premier Politics, Rocks Report, Lap of Luck shit, and uh, new Cool Kids. So all that's on the way. And we just building up um, building up our stream and shit on Twitch, too, me and my boy Owen. We're doing a lot of, it's pretty a lot funny. of stream stuff, man. It's pretty funny. It's pretty, pretty, it's pretty dope, man. I like that shit a lot. I think, I think that shit is going to be the future in a little second, man. So we just building up a lot on that. And, uh, yeah, motherfuckers, if tune in, catch us on the streams and shit, Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, sometimes Fridays, and, yeah, I'll be talking about all this type of shit, like, you know, just talking about music, fashion, art, the culture, all that shit, so, that's the spot. Alright, man, well, until next time, everybody, I say what I mean, I mean what I say, haters gonna hate.